Hi, Sam Schiffman here. Today I want to talk to you about using knowledge graphs and LLMs to unlock the potential of clinical practice guidelines. I'd like to introduce you to Tommy. Tommy is a 14 year old and recently visited his pediatrician where his pediatrician noticed that his blood pressure was a little bit elevated. Luckily, the American Academy of Pediatrics recently released a guideline for how to treat children with high blood pressure. Now, this guideline is 72 pages long with 30 key action statements, 20 tables, and over 270 citations. Now, that's a lot to read. Buried deep within that is this section on what to do if your patient comes in with a high blood pressure to an office visit. Now, I've taken that text and I've pulled it out for you to make it a little bit easier to read. The guideline also includes this nice flow chart of what to do. But if you closely read what's here, it's not really reflected in this flow chart. It would be more reflected in this, which I've turned on its side to make it a little bit easier to read. We have the patient arrives and we take a measurement and then we need to stage that measurement with these uh, formulas, which gives us a stage to do and then a set of things that we should do depending on what the stage is and how many times we've read the blood pressure at that stage. That's pretty complicated, but relatively structured. If we come back to this, we can look at it. It does have some structure to it. And we can actually pull this into a graph. So here what I've done is I've taken this text here and using the header structure, pulled it into a knowledge graph in uh, Neo4j. And then I've run an embedding on it uh, to give me those vector numbers. Now we can do something called RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation. And I've done a bunch of videos on RAG, which you can check out at this link here, but essentially what we do is we take that curated data like the um, clinical practice guideline, we do that embedding on it, which gives us the indexes of the information in it, then we can take a question, do the embedding on that, and find the relevant information within the guideline, give all that to an LLM and get an answer. So now we can do something like this. We can ask a question of the LLM and supply it with good information. Now that's a great step, but there's still some problems with deploying an LLM to the uh, site of care, right? Uh, for one, there's still no guarantee that the LLM isn't going to hallucinate. And now the user has this kind of expectation that the LLM is backed by authority, and if it does hallucinate, it's going to be harder to detect. Also, there's all kinds of security risks still with deploying an LLM to the point of care. So what else could we do? Well, what if we ask the LLM actually to tell us about the CPG and help us turn it into something that's repeatable and computable? What if we ask the LLM some things like this, where I've give, taken a section of the guideline and I've asked it to tell me what would be the things to do next. And it gives me some pretty reasonable answers. We can do this and then we can decorate the graph that we've created. So here I've asked a number of questions. Um, I've taken that structure where I had each of the headers and I've asked for a calculation of what would cause that patient to be within that section, that stage. I've asked what the inputs would be. I've asked what should be done next. And then I've gone and asked to, to deduplicate all the inputs so I have a single list of inputs. Now we can take that graph and we can transform it into a BPMM XML. And let's take a look at all this. Okay, so here's my code, and I'm not going to run the code that actually uh, asks the questions of the LLM uh, just because it takes a little while. But here I'm using Llama 3, um, running it with OLama. And here's, for example, one of the questions. The first question I'm asking is about the functions uh, 
for each node, right? And then I have a bunch of other questions that I'm asking down here in order to get to that graph. Now, I also have a script here that once that graph is created, is going to create the BPM men XML. So right now, that is blank. So uh, let's come over here and let's run this script. It runs relatively quickly. And now you can see that this has been filled in. And let's come over here. Uh, the people at Treza Tech were nice enough to let me uh, experiment with their tool. So we're going to import that file in here. And we get something that's pretty reasonable. Let's just uh, rearrange this just a little bit so that's an easier to read. It gets this uh, formula pretty well, but not perfectly. Uh, and I just need to do a quick couple of quick edits. We can go over here and we can test this. So our patient was 14 years old. Let's say he had a 125 over, say, 81. And we see that that is elevated. So it goes through the elevated stage. Now we could come back over here and let's say he's not doing so well. And that is a stage two. This link will take you to my contact information. Uh, you can subscribe for future updates and uh, give this video a like. And thank you very much for watching.